Okay, so today we will discuss something we call cathode ray oscilloscope or CRO. So this is an analog CRO and as you can see there is another instrument which we call functional generator and we will use that later on to describe the working principle of CRO. So as you can see there are lots of lots of knobs in CRO. So we will now concentrate on the knobs of the CRO. So first of all this red knob is the power knob of a CRO. As you can see if I press it we have given the main switch already. So if I press it so it makes the circuit on and you can see two lines of uh, green lines, continuous lines on the screen. This is the cathode ray screen. And now there are so many knobs as we have said earlier. So first of all concentrate on these two big knobs. Now so this knob this part consists one channel. This is we call it channel 1 and this is channel 2. So as you can see from here we have taken a channel from where a red uh, and the black two ends. This is the positive and this is the negative end for channel 1. Similarly one can use for the channel 2 already. Okay. So what are the knobs? So let's see. This small knob indicates the Y position, means the vertical position of the channel 1. As you can see that if I move this knob, the line, one line just automatically goes up and down. So that is means the vertical direction is reflected on this and similarly for the case of channel 2 as you can see the second line is now going up and down so we can move the vertical we can displace it vertically by this knob and these are the knobs by which we can measure the amplitude of the given voltage on this let's say one channel one and channel two there are so many digits wrote down on this circle so according to those channels those numbers we can divide and calculate the given voltage and how it is done we will show by some uh, example let okay then come to this third knob this is the knob by which we can measure the frequency of the incoming wave and here also you can see there are so many numbers written and circularly and by rotating them we change the time per division and this counts the in horizontal direction and this knob is called the exposition knob and it changes those two lines horizontally from left to right as you can see as we are turning the knob these lines goes from left to right okay. and there are some other knobs also like x y knob means if we want to superpose x and y let's say the channel 1 is x and the channel 2 is y then 
we can if we want to make some superposition uh, then we have to go to the x y mode like this if i put it means it will give me the superposition of this two now as there is no signal that's why it is not showing anything but if we put some signal it will show some figure like uh, if we put two sinusoidal waves in channel 1 and channel 2 and then if we give the xy uh, button then it will show a deciduous figure as we know that two uh, superposition of two perpendicular waves um, gives rise to a deciduous figure so and now come to this node this is an intensity node the last node as you can see the intensity is increasing and decreasing as we move this knob. So in order to see a good picture we have to adjust the intensity of the lines on the CFT screen and this the second knob is called the focusing knob. As you can see this as we move this thing then it get defocused or focus so we can focus make a right focus adjustment uh, by turning this knob and then this is called the x magnification knob means magnification knob means it can multiply uh, 10 times and compress the picture so you can use it if someone needs it okay. and then there are there is a tester or there are some channels from where some particular definite uh, voltage uh, and particular uh, type of frequency is given just like you can see here 0.2 volt a square wave is given from here so if we can uh, if we put some channel here so it will show a let's say a square wave like maybe let me So as you can see this is a square wave. So this comes and goes like this. So this is a square wave pattern one can show as from here we can feed in channel 1. So we can measure the value it is given 2 volt of uh, a square so we can measure the voltage by counting the numbers on this screen how we can do it suppose this is point this blue dot is pointed on the box 0.5 so it is called 0.5 volt per division that means it indicates that a big square means 0.5 volt so if i say that it is a 0.5 volt that means uh, we have the five 
division within each big square. So now one can see that it is one big square, two big square, three big square and almost four big square. That means 4 into point, uh, 5 means 20 small division along y axis and we have said that 0.5 volt per 5 division means 0.1 volt per small 1 division that means 20 into 0.1 so it is 2 so 2 volt so exactly it matches with the number given here that's how one can measure it is actually same in the case of uh, also the second channel and so we can actually measure the frequency of this square wave with the help of this horizontal knob how so this is done in this fashion so this blue dot is now pointed towards 2 millisecond that says one big square one side of the big square horizontal length means 2 millisecond so that means one smallest division along x axis is 2 by 5 millisecond and now we have to count how much the length of a side is so we can adjust it in this way and this says that it is one big division two big square division three and there are four number four if we get it very right okay so that says that 90 smallest division so that means 19 smallest division into 2 by 5 millisecond so this total length is 19 into 2 by 5 millisecond so uh, in order to get the frequency we have to invert this whole thing so let us examine this signal how we can measure the frequency of a given wave let's say we have given a 1 kilohertz uh, sinusoidal wave from functional generator with uh, a maximum value of peak to peak 10 volt we are given so as you can see this is showing 0.99 or 0.1 that means 1 kilohertz we have given so how to measure it in CRO as you can see this is the sinusoidal signal on the CRO screen and now you see that this blue dot is set at 0.2 millisecond per division it means that one large square, one side of the large square, the horizontal side of the large square is 0.2 millisecond per division. That means one smallest division is 0.2 by 5 millisecond. So now we have to count how much smallest uh, division along the horizontal axis it goes so it takes one big square two three four five and one two three three small squares that means five into five means 25 plus three 28 smallest division along the horizontal axis and that means 28 smallest division into 0.2 by 5 millisecond and inverting that whole thing we get 
it like 1.12 kilohertz so that is really quite close to this number 1 kilohertz so that's how one can measure the frequency of a wave and you can also measure the voltage as we have also shown previously means here in this channel 2 it is given this is the blue dot is defining that this 2 volt per division that means one big square along the vertical axis means 2 volt and the peak to peak value is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The 5 big square that means 2 into 5 so 10 volt as a peak to peak voltage. So that's how we can measure along the vertical axis by these two in channel 1 and channel 2 respectively the voltages of a given signal and from this now we can measure the horizontal axis means the frequency of the given waveform that's how in a cathode ray oscilloscope we can measure the waveform or wave pattern we have to examine now you can see that we have fed the same signal in channel 1 and channel 2 as you can see the both we have taken in 2 volts per division so the height of this 2 is also same and uh, from channel 1 and channel 2 we are taking as channel 1 as x signal and channel 2 as y signal so if I now want to get a superposition of this 2 wave we can go to xy mode so you see it makes a straight line so this is making straight line because they are of same frequency and same phase so in superposition of these two it is making a straight line as a special case of a Lissajous figure and if there are some phase differences we can introduce between these two lines and we can get that so many patterns like circle, ellipse and uh, the straight lines with various slopes we, we can get so this this is how one can actually measure the Lissajous figure also by the help of a cathode ray oscilloscope.